While writing episode one of Bao, I actually needed to fell a pine in my backyard, so I started filming myself chopping it down to illustrate a point. I had chopped down a tree that size before, but underestimated the time it would take to do it again. I was desperate to catch the timber moment on film, so I hacked at it furiously, racing the waning daylight. Exhausted, I humbled myself and accepted help from my videographer friends, but they eventually had to go, leaving me to spend the next few hours frantically swinging away. I had to make a decision, keep chopping and hope that it would fall before the sunset, or stop now so it would stay upright overnight till I could start over in the morning and catch the moment on film. I chose option one and kept swinging. I was soaked with sweat and each strike was painful. My hands froze to the handle of my axe with an excruciating grip I couldn't release. I finally gave in and borrowed my neighbor's chainsaw, but it wouldn't start. Admitting defeat, I packed up my stuff and headed in as night fell. I prayed and begged God to let the tree stay up overnight, but I couldn't sleep. Every few minutes, I would hear the tree creaking and branches breaking as the temperature dropped. I rose at 5 a.m. and set up my cameras. It was just getting bright enough to film outside when I headed over to the cameras to turn them on, but the surrounding trees finally gave way and the pine came crashing down with me seconds away from capturing it. I know it probably sounds ridiculous, but for the first time in my life, I was actually mad at God. I mean, it's not like I've never been disappointed about something before, but I couldn't understand why in the world would God supernaturally answer my prayer and let this tree stay up against the wind and the weather all night for 12 hours from when I quit filming till the morning, and then he let me miss it by one minute. I was actually really mad. I, I was beside myself with shock that he would let that happen. And I talked to him about it. I said, God, why would you do this? You know what? I got over it pretty quickly because I have good roots. I know I'm playing this metaphor out, but that's the point. Having good roots spiritually, it, it's not just a metaphor. It means you have a history in God. And I've had a history in God since I was three, four, five. You know, I went to Sunday school, I learned all the Bible verses, but I've had a history of knowing Him. I've had a history of learning that He's good. Even when I don't feel like it, I know He's good deep down. And so my roots inform my heart. Even though I was feeling frustrated and mad at Him, and I was questioning, God, do you even care about this video that I want to do? Do you care about anything I want to do? Ultimately, it was real easy to fall back on the truth because I know him and I have that history with him. And I'm not talking like I've got it made because again, this was a pretty small thing to get upset about. But I think the principle is true for other things in life too. You know, sometimes you can do everything right. I woke up at five in the morning to get this shot. I did everything right. I got everything prepared. And you know, the disappointment hit me. And this is a small thing, but you know, disappointments hit you out of nowhere. You can never really be sure when they'll happen or how they'll happen. You know, and that's the thing. Maybe you uh, missed the audition. You don't get accepted. Maybe you get dumped. Maybe you don't get accepted for the job or you get fired from your current job. Maybe you lose a loved one. Plenty of disappointments that can come our way, just like with trees. You never know what the weather's gonna do. You never know what's gonna happen in the middle of the night. But when you have a root system, when you have a history in God where you've learned of His goodness and you've been shown time and again that He does love you and does care about you, even those times where it's tempting to doubt and it's tempting to wonder where He is and what He's doing in your life and why He would allow suffering or you know a tragedy to hit you, that root system, that history in God, is something you can draw on for strength. And just like trees with good roots, you won't fall. You won't topple over just because something bad happens. Just like with trees, we can stay standing through tragedy, through a storm, when we're able to draw on sometimes just the good old Bible verses. Even when you don't feel them, you can learn them and be really connected to them and then in a moment of suffering you don't feel it. 
but you can draw on it because it's true and it's part of your foundation. It's part of your makeup. It's a root spiritually. It's part of your structure, who you are. So, you know, with me, with this little setback with the video, you know, I was able to draw on my history with God. Of course he loves me. He's not against me. He didn't spite me. And, you know, I was able to draw on the, the truth that I've always learned. When you have a, a real tragedy, maybe a loved one dies, maybe something else that hits you unexpectedly, you can draw on those truths about God. You know, we've been talking about trees, and there's one major difference between trees and people. If a tree falls over, it's done. I mean, it's dead, you know. If it's a small tree like this, maybe you can try to mend it. But basically, you know, the analogy stops there. Because with people, falling over isn't the end. You can stumble. In fact, the Bible says a righteous man stumbles seven times and still gets up. The Bible's full of verses about God's grace and his ability to restore people. Even when it's the result of our own mistake, our own sin, God's able to restore. Even when the Israelite people betrayed him time and again, and he sent locusts to punish them, he came back around and said, I will restore the years the locusts have eaten. You know, even if you have a good root system, meaning you have a history with God, you've got, you know, the Bible verses memorized, you went to Sunday school, you prayed, you used to know Him. If you're not currently nourishing yourself through that root system on a regular basis, it's not gonna do you any good. Sure, you may stay standing during a storm, just like a tree that won't blow over if the roots are good, but inside the tree could be hollow and it's gonna die soon. And sometimes people get that way. You know, it's, uh, it's easy to have that history in God, but to have a cynical detachment. So yeah, maybe a tragedy hits and you don't show much emotion, but you're dead inside. The goal is not to avoid the pain. The goal is to draw on your love of God, to draw on your relationship with God in order to go through that pain, to go through that storm together. You know, sometimes it really does all come back to the answers we're tired of hearing because they seem so trite. But you know, prayer, Bible study, those things, that's our food. We can't do without it. Just like a tree needs good soil where it can get the water and it can get the nutrients that it needs, we've got to plant our roots regardless of our history. You may be a new Christian with no history with God. You may not believe in God at all yet, but you can start feeding yourself on the Word of God. Jesus said He is the bread of God. When you feed yourself on Him, on the relationship with Him, you get nourishment. That's what it's all about. So, you know, let this be a reminder to plant your roots deep, to flourish where you're planted, to get a system in place, a history with God. Memorize some Bible verses. Get a history of prayer with Him where when a tragedy comes, you won't fall over. And you won't just be a facade, just an outer shell of bark. You'll be a real, true person who's completely whole all the way through. Not because you're some super guy that's already got all the answers and you've made it, but because you're planted in good soil. You're planted on God. You're standing on the rock, so to speak. So this is Bruce with Spirit Life.